Hey guys, Sam from Ballarat Electric Bikes. I've been getting a lot of questions lately about these Mobipus controllers that I've been testing out now for a few months and recently added to my website, uh, web store. So I wanted to put together a bit of a video of the overview uh, features and just make sure uh, it was clear on what sets these controllers apart from a lot of the controllers that we're using in the DIY and hacker space at the moment. There was a lot of different controllers in the range in the past, uh, but now it's basically a 200 amp controller and a 600 amp controller. 200 amp controller here's got a uh, currently mounted to a passive cooling vac, uh, can be heat sunk to your frame. And uh, the more heat sinking you do, obviously, the longer it takes for any thermal limiting features to cut in. The big guy, the 600 amp unit, currently sporting a wet vac uh, on it for more active heat exchange. And the guys at the factory have hooked that up for a standard PC cooling unit. So uh, any of you PC fans out there, you might find some very cheap radiators, uh, which can be quite small in comparison to things like traditional motorcycle radiators. Main difference between the unit, apart from physical size and amperage, uh, is that the 600 amp unit can also do things like sine cosine encoding as well as hall sensor um, feedback for your motor. That's handy for some of the larger in-runner motors, things like uh, Mars Series ME909 and uh, 1114 motor that's on my Aprilia sports bike. Um, whereas the little guy can do uh, only hall sensors, which suits most of us anyway for the price. Recommended retail price of these in the global market is around 350 US for the small one and 800 US for the big one. So the little guy is quite compact and quite good value and it can actually go a bit over 200 amps for periods of time. Um, so it, it's, it's quite significant. These controllers um, aren't just sine wave, they're actually three controllers in one. I'll come back to that a little bit when I cover off some of the software features. As well as the, the controllers, they actually have this funky little uh, feedback box here for throttles, which is great. Turns any mechanical cable uh, from your favorite uh, motorcycle throttle or EV throttle into a standard throttle signal that we all use. And I think that's really cool for things like vintage motorcycle rebuilds or if you've got uh, a difficult application where you've got a favorite throttle. There's been a lot of throttles in the recent times, things like domino throttles, which are quite expensive. Um, this addresses that a different way, which I think is really cool. Both the controllers use an RS-485 protocol for communication. You don't have to worry too much about the technicalities of that. These little USB dongles, um, very cheap uh, on places like eBay or, or some of the popular electronic sites. The main thing when hooking those up is to make sure that your pack voltage, these controllers are normally 72 volts, can go a bit higher, um, never get through to your USB port because that would be quite disastrous. Uh, so I'll put together that video soon on how I've hooked mine up in the past. Over the back here I've got a cheap uh, Windows tablet that I've managed to get my hands on for around 40 US bucks. I'm looking forward to hooking up the dashboard on that. At the moment the software only runs on Windows, um, there may be changes. To that, stay tuned. Fair bit of discussion on that at the moment. Um, As they say in the Lego movie, the piece of resistance uh, is the software. There's a lot here. Some of the basic things for dynamometer testing where you can chart and graph are great. Um, by far, the most interesting bit for me is the controller settings. And there's a number of levels here that you can unlock depending on whether you're a tinkerer. Uh, or an OEM. These controllers really did come out of the OEM space, um, not very well represented outside Asia, uh, and that's where I've been keen to bring some of these to market for a lot of the DIY tinkerers um, that I work with on a daily basis through social media. Not only can you set things like your traditional low and high voltage cutoffs, you can change slightly things like your whole sensor angles if they're mounted slightly out. Um, configure your CAN bus protocols, different throttle signals, uh, analog brake, forward reverse. If I fully unlock this, um, there's some really cool settings that, uh, that start to come into play. You can actually configure this, as I mentioned before, as a, a standard six step square wave controller at certain speeds and RPM bands. You can configure it as a general sine wave controller, and you can actually switch on field orientation based on a certain speed. Now that's significant because what it means is you can uh, tune this baby up 
uh, such that you can take it out on the road, work out what your top speed would normally be, bring uh, the EV back in, and a couple of kilometers an hour before that, you can set your field orientation to kick in, and what you find is a radical uh, shift in your top speed. Now that's pretty cool, because it means you can get your efficiency down low um, where you need it the most, and you can change your top speed without having to add a lot of pack voltage. So that can be quite uh, good for saving money on a project. Um, or maybe you're building a bike that will mostly do short track work or spurt around town, but you want that option of being able to use high speed out on the highway occasionally. So that's really cool. Uh, on top of that, a thing that really probably rustles my jimmies the most would have to be the dashboard, because uh, it's really sweet. Uh, it's got your basics like your voltage, your amps, phase amps, some temperature feedback, as well as your speed of course, turbo and economy mode, uh, some thermal warnings. Um, there is a throttle percentage in the top right corner, handy if you're not quite sure uh, if you've got some sort of issue to troubleshoot, uh, and your trip mileage. So that's really cool. Um, there's a, a large amount of information on these I've tried to compile at the Ballarat Electric Bikes webpage. If you go there to the downloads page, you can see uh, some diagrams on the controller size. And as well as that, you can actually download uh, a basic version of the software to have a play around. The software does auto update and it is quite open source. So if there's features and things people want to add, um, there is an opportunity to communicate with the guys at the factory and get that changed, which is fantastic. Um, does differ greatly, I think, to some of the Kellys, the Savvatons, and even uh, the APT, certainly on size, uh, as well as the features and the price point. So I think these controllers are gonna be really useful uh, to us. Also has the ability to share config files. I didn't show that in the software, uh, but if someone develops their preferred uh, config file for uh, maybe a Golden Motor 3000 or, or 5000 watt motor, or maybe a Quanshun 273 or similar, a Muxus. You've got the ability, therefore, to um, swap those config files rather than have to go in and play around for a long period of time. So I hope that's a good overview. Uh, apologies for my voice. My wife says I've got a great face for radio, so I've spared you from that. Um, but I'll put together a video in the next few days on how to interface these babies. And uh, I've got a couple of motors out on the bench that I can config them and spin them up on. Cheers.